Uh, there you go. Okay, we're up to Samachay uh, Aleph. Um, Gufa, four lines down. Right, so now going back, going back to the sugya. Uh, this is we have the whole let two blot klalu prado klal, saying whether basically the whole sugi was about kefil, a ganav pays kefil what the sources for that, and a tayin tainus ganav pays kefil what the sources for that. Then in the middle of that sugya, um, Rav had said that that. Uh, what do you call it? Rav had said that this Karen and then this Kefal. That Rav didn't say. That's the Psukim. But Rav says that Karen gets evaluated according to the time, what it was worth, and it was stolen. So let's say the guy stole from somebody tonight. He stole a cow tonight, and the cow was worth 100 bucks. Then by the time they get to Besden on Monday, the prices of cows went down to 50 Right, so the Karen, the principal that he has to pay back, he pays back what it was worth and was stolen. So that he has to pay back a hundred. But the Kefel, right, because he he got caught, that he only has to pay what it was worth when they went to Besdin. And the same thing with Dalit Vehe, if he took a sheep or an ox and he shechted it or sold it, he has to pay four times or five times, or four times for a sheep and five times for an ox. Those, those get judged based on the time of Besdin. So it would it'd be, it's, it comes out, it's quite a, I mean, it's not complicated calculation, but comes out that the, the, uh, the Karen, he's paying what it was worth tonight, which using our example is a hundred. And then the Kefel, he's going to pay just 50 because he only pays the Kefel what it was worth on Monday, which we're saying is using an example is only worth 50. And if it would be Arba Chamisha. So then it would be 200, right? It wouldn't be 400 or 500. It wouldn't be. It would be four times, four times 50. That's, that's an interesting chiddish from, from Rav. Yeah, so well, Kufa. It could be more. If it's, if it's the times the base dinner and it's worth double, it's worth 200. So he could be end, end up paying 800 then. Correct. If it goes the other way. But we're going to see that there's going to be we're going to see that uh, that it's it's only going to work in one way. Yeah, okay, so let's see. So Gufa, Omar Rav, Karen, Kain Shagana. Karen gets paid when it was, what it was when it was stolen. Tashume Kefil, but Tashume Aru Chamisha, Keshasa Mada Bedin. Get paid what it was worth when they were standing in uh, Bezdin. My time at the Rav. Why does Rav, where does Rav get this from? Amakra, Geneva, the Chayim. Like we said yesterday, the Pasuk says Geneva and Chayim. Amai Koma Rachman Chayim, the Geneva. Why is it, what is it saying that it's alive with Geneva? So the Gemara says, Achaya le Karen ke'en shegana. Meaning you, you make the Karen <coughs> live like when it was stolen. Meaning, you look at it like the Karen was alive when it got stolen. So Mamela, the Karen gets paid back what it was worth when it was stolen. Right? Fine. So meaning, again, so Karen, you pay back what it was worth when it was stolen. And the Kefal and, and Arab Hamisha gets paid back what it was worth by the best. And some of Amina, Kinaim Vishakhev Rav, Amar Lahashmait. So Rav Sheshis is pretty fond of saying this. This is not the first time we had this in Sechta. We're going to have it again in a couple of blah. We had it other Masechtas. <coughs> he says, um, Rav, when he said this, then he was dozing off. Naim Vishakhev. He was like dozing off and sleeping. The Tanya, why? Because we have a Bryce that says, not like that. Khusha Vishmena. If a crook stole an animal that was Khusha, that was thin. Pishmina and he made it fat. Mishalim tashume kevel tashume arvu chamisha kein shegonav. He pays the kevel and tashume arvu chamisha the way it was when it was stolen, which is when it was very thin. That's what I heard from Rav. Rav had said that the kevel and the tashume arvu chamisha should get paid when it was hamada bedin. When it was hamada bedin, in this case, he stole it and it was thin. He fattened it up. When they brought him to Bezdin, it should have. He should have to pay back 
kefil and four or five, what it was worth when it was in Bezim, which was a whole lot fatter. So that's not like Rav. Um, so the Gemara answers, Amri Mishum Da Amr Alei, I'm not patim no va'atcha kalta. I fattened up, the crook could say, I fattened up your animal and you're going to take, you're going to take the, take that money. Um, right? It's a Jewish chutzpah. It is a chutzpah, but the bottom line is the guy put in a lot of work into <clears throat> the guy put a lot of work into the uh, into the animal. So he's saying what, what, he can kind of he can kind of look. It took me took me uh, you know forty hours to plan the theft. And uh, you, you know, so why should I pay that much on the Karen? Take away uh, the the effort that I went into uh, getting away free or getting away, or getting the setting up the the, the theft. No, uh, so we're gonna see. No, we're gonna see that this is a little different than if the the worth of the animal goes up. Here, the guy himself, the owner had this thin little cow or thin sheep. He didn't care to make it fat. The Ganov here made it fat. Right, so he's saying I. Uh, he's saying I made it fat. You didn't care to make it fat. We're gonna see. Well, let's let's see a little bit vital. Yeah. So Toshima, so coming here, Shemena Bikhishan. This is the opposite. Now it was fat, and then it got thin. Mishalem. So Rashi says, how did it get thin? He either hit it with a stick, or he made it work a lot. Right. Maybe I ought to try that. So Shemena Bikhisha was fat and it got thin. So then Mashaam to Shumakev al Shum Aru Khabisha Kain Shagunov, the way it was when it was stolen. Right. right. So that's again, that's Fakir from Rab, and this is the opposite. Meaning the same Kasha, but this is the opposite. The first Kasha was he stole it thin and then it got fat. So the Ghana is saying, I put all that money in to make it fat. So why should you, why should I have to pay um quadruple for that? But this case is the opposite. The guy can't say, I made it thin. So how are you going to answer that to Rav? So then Gemara says, because we tell the owner, Mali Katlakula, Mali Katlapalga. What's the difference if he killed the entire animal or he killed half the animal? Right? Meaning if he had shechted it, he'd, he'd pay Dalit Behe. So when did the Shechita start? This, it was a slow death. Basically, he's he he was beating it or working it very hard, so he was slowly he was slowly making this animal die. So Mimela, since he was slowly ma making this animal die, therefore he is therefore it's the he does have to pay the dalit vehe the way it was when it was stolen. And Kiko Rav, when did Rav say his din? The yoyker of He said it when it got expensive, when it got cheap, right? Not. Not when, uh, not not when, uh, um, not not. This is what we're saying before Rachman. Not when it got fatter or skinnier. When the animal itself, the value of the animal, went up and down. That's when Rav says it. Not when it when it got fatter or skinnier. Right? Okay. So hechi dami. What's the case? So then, if you said in the beginning when it was stolen, it was worth a zuz, and then it went up, and it, now it's worth four zuz, Karen, Kain, Shagonov, and that's when you play. That's when you pay the Karen what it was worth when it was stolen, which means he only has to pay a zuz. If that's the case, then Rav is disagreeing with Rav. Doma Rav, Haiman de Gosel Chavisa de Chamer Mechave. If a guy stole a barrel of wine from his friend, it was worth a zuz, and then the price of the barrel of wine went up to four zuz. So now it depends. If he broke it, meaning if the person who stole the barrel actively broke the barrel or drank it, then he has to pay four, which is how much it was worth when it was Broken, not when it was stolen. When it was stolen, it was only worth one. Isfarm and Mela, if it got broken by itself, Mashalim Zuz, then he only has to pay a Zuz. Right? So this is a very interesting case. So what's the difference here? Right? This is a Sugi and Again, 
it was worth one when he stole it. Then pr prices of wine went up. So it went up to four. Right? So then he pays, was saying that he pays. It depends. I'm sorry. It depends. If he broke it, the crook broke it. Or drank it. So then he has to pay four. If, he, if it just got broken by itself, then he only pays one from when it was stolen. Right? So basically the difference is, is that if it's in existence or not. If it's in existence... Yeah, this, uh, this is before charging him capo. This is just the Karen. This, this is just Karen. This is just Karen. Yeah, we're not talking about capo. Just, uh, right now it's just Karen. Right? Meaning if it was still existing, so then it belongs to the owner. Right? So now when, when the owner, when the price went up, the owner had a barrel of wine that's worth four. So when this guy went and broke it or drank it, he restole it, meaning it's considered a new Geneva. And since it's considered a new Geneva, so therefore it's as if he stole it when it was worth four. But if he just broke it, then it's nothing new. It didn't become it didn't become a second Geneva. It's part of the original Geneva. So therefore, he only pays one. That's enough Gamina. Right? But whatever it is, what do you see from here? Right? Is that shafting an animal is the same thing or and selling an animal? You get four for it now. Right. That's, that's exactly. You get four for it now. So no, but instead of it broke by itself, he doesn't get four. Right, because there was no new Kenyan. It's sort of, we look at it like if he broke it himself, if he actively broke it himself, or if he um, drank what it. Else? Forgetting you've got it for Shoyma, what does the Shoyma have to pay? What would a Shoyma have? I would think the same thing. I, I would think the same thing. Um, Doesn't Shoyma have to give me back a barrel of wine? The Shoymer, what did we say? He has to pay when he. I would think that the Shoymer, when he takes it, Shlichus Yad, that's when he's kind of it. So when he was kind of it, it was four. Well, it it gets a little bit more one. complicated by a Shoymer. Kind of was one. No, when I, it was worth one when he stole Here, when the crook right, he so stole when it at gave one. It to the Shoymer was worth one. And the Shoymer right. took a Christ to watch it. And now right, it's worth four and it breaks. No, so now, now he went and ate it. So that's when the that Geneva happens, when it was worth four. No, you, you're saying it's re -gonved. So I'm asking Correct. about a Shimer. Forget the Ghanif. I'm asking about a Shimer. Right, so the Shimer also. The Shimer, the Shimer also. He got Would it. Would have to pay four. Started you using have to it. give him a barrel of wine now. I think so. So that's if Shimer has more Christ than a Ghanif? He gets punished more no, than Aganov. Aganov also has to pay for it, according no, to Rabbi. No, he said if it broke Aganav. by itself, he doesn't. If it broke by itself? Yeah. Right. The Shimer would have so to the pay Shimer for the same thing. So, no, the Shimer, if it broke... He'd have to give me a barrel of wine. I gave him a barrel of wine. He has to give me back a barrel of wine. It has to be. Now he has to... barrel of wine costs $4 now. He, where's he getting well, a that, barrel no, of wine for a sure. dollar? No, I'm that, not getting it. No. In that case, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't care, what do you remember? No, in that case... No, he has to pay one. I mean, the, 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 I can't even learn that... As much like he gives me, he gives me back a quarter of a... I gave him a barrel of wine to watch. He's giving me back a quarter of a barrel? Uh, the, they have the same that's problem. Not I gave, him that's not what I gave him to watch. He took a Christ to watch my wine barrel. No. And the Farshim learned that because of the Shulah Sashayim, the Kenyan that a Shimer makes when he takes the item that he's watching... It makes it his if something happens. So that's the moment that he pays for it when it when he took it. Always, whether he does something or not, he always pays the lower amount. He pays the lower amount. Okay, not the lower. Okay, he always it. pays the original amount, whether it's higher or lower. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I okay, but the main thing here, the main point that the Gemara is trying to make from from Raba is that when you sell an animal, or when you or when you shecht an animal, it's the same thing as drinking or breaking it, right? And here he clearly says that it doesn't go b'shas the geneva, right? So, so therefore, it's a kash on Rab. 
because Rav would hold you only have to pay one because he only pays what it was worth and it was stolen. So that's what the Gemara says on the first wide line. Amri Kikama Rav going to make Kara Shavi Dal of Asaf Shavi Zuza. When the Rav said say his din, that's when it was worth four, and then at the end it was worth a zuz. Karen Kain Shaganov. Then that's when you the Kain, meaning it's only when it went down in price. So the Karen goes when it was stolen. Tashumi Kevel, Tashumi Aru Chamisha, Kishas Tamod the Bedin, and. Kefal and Tashmuli Amr Chamisha is like is is Shas Hamad Bedin, right? But when the price goes up, then Anochanami Rab is Maida. When the price goes up, you pay the higher price. Right? So now it comes out that Rav only says you pay the price that was worth when it was stolen, if the price goes down. So the advantage is always on the guy that got stolen from. If the price goes down, he's going to get paid the price that it was stolen. If the price goes up, then he's going to get paid the Karen of what it was worth. By the Shah Samadha Bedin. Now we get this uh, a proof. The Gemara is going to bring a proof now to, to Rav that this is Taka the way it is. Right? Now it's uh it's there's uh, gonna be a three-way machloikis here. It's an uh, interesting machloik. So Balabayas, Shatan Tain is gonna be called. You have a Balabayas, right? Why it uses a lush and a balabayas? Um it, it means a shaman. Right, a shomer, and then he said, and the thing went missing, and he said somebody stole it. The nishba, the and then he swore, but then he was made. So again, he a shomer, the thing got lost, and he said no, it got stolen. So the chayr he'd be potter, and he swore that it got stolen, but then he had charata, and he was made. Ubo edim, and then edim came, and but he got meaning like we had in yesterday's daf. He admitted before the Edom came. So let's say, if before the Edom came to show that it was not stolen and that he had taken it, but he admitted it, meaning he admitted before the Edom came, then he has to pay Karen. And we know that when a guy makes a false shvua, he has to pay a fifth, right, a fifth more, and he has to bring a Karbanashim. But he does not have to pay Kefal. Right and a might why because kefil is a knas right? he doesn't have to pay double because it's a knas and a knas might of knas is pot. But mishabo edim haida. But if when the edim came he was maida meaning he only was maida after the edim so now mishalim tishul me kefil he pays kefil because he got caught the asham and he also has to bring an asham why because he lied the chomshay now what about the chaimish right again just to be clear. When a guy lies and he makes a false shvu, he has to pay Karen and Chaimesh and an Asham. And here the guy got caught twice, meaning he got he admitted that he lied under oath and he and he got caught by Adam. So how much is he paying? So uh Rabbi Yaakov, who's this opinion here, he holds that you have to he pays Kefel. And Asham, he has to bring the carbon Asham. And Chaimesh, he says that the Chaimesh, which is the fifth he's supposed to add for the Shvua, counts as Kefel. Meaning, we're going to say in Amit Beis, that what it means by that is if the Chaimesh comes out to the same price as the Kefel, then one payment suffices for both. If the Chaimesh does not come out for Kefel, then then it does, then he doesn't pay. Right? Um, how does that work mathematically? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, he does pay. If it doesn't work, the chaimish is not the same as the kefil. Then he does pay. How does it work mathematically? That's going to be on omid base. Let's stay tuned for omid base. How that's going to work? How do you get a fifth? That's going to be the part of the whole gemara here. How do you get that a fifth? Again, you have the karen, and then so he has to pay a fifth on the karen, and then he also might have to pay arba v'chamisha. Right or kefil? How is kefil or aruv chavisha? How can they possibly come out to be the equivalent? So that we'll have to see. But anyways, that's Rav Yaakov. She, the main thing that Rav Yaakov holds is that when the guy, when Adam come and prove that he falsely swore and he also admits it, he's going to get shafted on both ends. He's going to pay. He's going to have to pay as if he got caught, and he's going to have to pay um, as if he admitted that he made a shvur. So he gets the worst of both worlds according to Rabbi, according to Rav Yaakov. On top of base. Right? 
it says, because the Pasuk says, Beheshev es ha-shomoy b'roishoy v'chamishi soy yosef alav. He has to pay the asham, meaning he has to pay what he lied about, and he has to add a fifth. So what does this mean? Mamon ha-mashtalin b'roish moysef chaymish. Money that he has to pay at the beginning, meaning if he has to pay the keren, so then he adds a fifth. Mamon shein mashtalin b'roish, but money that doesn't get paid, b'roish, which is kefel, because he's not paying, meaning his, his this is Rav Shem Bayechai. I'm sorry, this is a Chachamim. Chachamim say that when you pay the Roshai, meaning the Karen, and that's it, so then you could add Chaymish. When you're paying more than Karen, which is Kefel, that's not the Roshai. So then, Momen Shein Meshtal and Baroish, Ein Moisif Chaymish, you do not add Chaymish. But you do have to bring a carbon Asham. So in this case, the Chachamim is sort of saying that. He, he's quasi getting caught for both. He certainly has to pay the kefal, and he certainly has to bring the carbon ashram for lying under oath, but the chaymish he doesn't pay, because since he's paying kefal, you don't pay chaymish. You only pay chaymish when you're paying karen. That's sheet number two, and sheet number three, there's no such thing as chaymish or a carbon when you're paying kefal. And since this guy's paying kefal, since the Adam nailed him, so Mamela, he does not have to pay um Chaimish or the Asham. Whatever it is. So that, again, that's just the three way machloikas. So Yaakov holds that if a guy gets caught lying and he admits after he was caught by the Adim, then he has to pay everything. He has to pay Karen, Chaimish, Kefel. But if the Chaimish comes out the same price as the Kefel or the Dalit Wahe, then he doesn't have to pay twice. That's Shitas Rub Shimon. Chachamim say he pays Karen. I'm sorry, he, if he pays Karen, then he has to, then he pays Chaimish. If he does not pay Karen because he's paying Kefel, which is the case here since Aiden came first, then he pays Kefel and he does not pay Chaimish, but he does have to bring a Karben Ash. And Rosh Hashim says, you're Potter from everything that, that you would pay for for the false Shua. Because since you're paying Kefel, you, you only pay Kefel and you don't pay any other any other, any of the other payments. Fine. So uh Katani Mia. Oh I leave off. So, yeah, Katani Mia is five lines down. Katani Mia, so what what's the proof here? We learned however that Chaimish Chaimish can potentially be the same thing as Kefil, Divir of Yaakov. Now hey me what's the case? This is Rahman was asking. Arba if you say that it was worth four when it was stolen. And then when they went to Bezdin, it was worth four. So Chaim Shah how are you gonna have the fifth be the same thing as Kefil? Kfela um would be four, right? And Chaim Shah would be a Zuz. Right? So the how do you have how do you have it that uh that the the Chaimish be the same thing as Kefil? Right, so then ha- that can't be the case. El alav the meikara shavi arba, well it was say shavi zuza must be that in the beginning was worth four, so the karen is worth four, and the end it's worth a zuz, the kfeila zuza the kefel. Right, is going to be a zuz. Right, the chaimsha zuza and the chaimish. Right, the fifth of four. Is a zuz. So then you right. So you, that's the only time you're going to have it that chaymesh and kefil is going to be worth the same thing. Alma Karen Kain Shagana. So it must be right that Karen gets paid, gets calculated for when it was stolen, which is when it was worth four. Tashume kefil, tashume dal vehe kishas hamada bedin, and tashume kefil, tashume dal vehe go bishas hamada bedin. Right. So that's a riot to rob. That when the price goes down, the it gets the Karen gets based on how much it was worth when it was stolen, and everything else gets evaluated when it was went by Hamod Bedin. So Gemara answers no. Maybe you could be talking about where it was worth four before, and it's still worth four. With the Kasha Kfeila Dalid and you have a Kasha that Kfeil is Dalid. And Chaimish is one Zuz. It's all about where he swore 
And he went back and he swore four times. For whatever reason, he swore four times. And then he was maida. The Taira says, you add on fifths, which was dashing that you can have, you can swear many times on one shua and, and on one uh, geneva and you could be chayev. So therefore, you could have a case of the chaymesh and the kefal being the, worth the same amount if this idiot swears falsely four times so each one of them, he has to add a fifth. So if you add a fifth four times, that comes out to the same thing as kefal. Right? I hope this is uh, semi-understandable. Right? It's a little bit of uh, it's a little bit of math. Anyway, so now we don't have a raya to to rab. Fine. So Amar Mar, it says that if he pays the karen, then that's when you pay a fifth. Money that's paid from the Reish. Reish is we're using as another uh, as another way of describing Karen. So then you add a fifth. But if it's money that's not paid the Reish, you don't add a fifth. But you have to bring a carbon Asham. Right? That was a Chacham. Right, you're saying you don't pay a chaymish because it says b'roishay when you're paying just karen, you pay chamishis. Asham nami loy mishalim. Asham, you should also not pay to haksid b'roishay. Achamishi soy ves ashmoy. It says the same thing by b'roishay. It says you had the fifth and asham. Meaning, so why is why the chachamim saying that when you only pay when you pay just karen, then you pay a fifth, right? But uh, you, uh, you don't pay when you're just paying karen. You pay a fifth if you're not paying karen. You don't pay a fifth. It should be the same thing by Asham, that when you pay Karen, then you then you give a fifth. When you pay uh, when you pay Kefal, you don't. So my answer is Amrila from Rabbanon at S. I'm sorry, Paske Kra. The word S separates. The word S in the Pasuk separates the Chaimesh from the Asham. Okay. So Mamela, you can't you can't dash them both back onto the um, Roshai. Okay, but Roshim by Yochai. What's Roshim by Yochai going to do with the S? The S, Arvekra, the word Vav takes the S and mixes it, meaning the Chacham is saying the S separates it. Rabbi Kiva say, Rabbi Shim by Yochai is saying the, the Vav in the beginning of the S mixes it back up. Rabban and Ari Lach, Loy Lich Tev Rachman, Loy Vav, Loy S. Well, why don't you just not add the Vav, but add the S and then don't, you don't need the Vav? Right? So it doesn't make sense to dash in it there. You couldn't not write S. Because we want to make sure that there's a separation between Maman that's going to Gavaya, which is the Asham, and Maman that's going to the Hedjit, which is the fifth. Hilchach, therefore, um, so that's why we needed the Pasuk Gavav to mix it up and say, we need to separate it with the S to tell you that we separate between payment to the to the Gavaya and payment to a regular person. But we needed the Vav just to mix it up to tell you that it's the same din. If somebody stole a Tle and it became, this is a new thing, so if somebody stole a Tle, a lamb, and then it became a ram, if he, if he stole a uh, calf, and then it became a shor. So nasa shinui v'yadai v'karnu. That becomes a shinui. And and the, the din is by Geneva that when something changes, shinui is a kinyin. Right? So what's the difference? So then, tavachu machar shaloyu tavach shaloyu machar. Therefore, if he shechts it or sells it, then he's shechting or selling his own thing. And therefore, it's, uh, therefore he's potter from kefal, right? Rachamim, this is another, another interesting one, right? I'm saying, because this thing grew from a calf to a cow, or from a ram, whatever, to a lamb to a ram, then because of that, that shinui makes it have come a kinyan, and therefore when he stole it, and when he shechted it or sold it, it's considered, it's considered um, his, and he did not shaft or sell somebody else's item, and therefore he does not have to pay 
ארבע וחמישה. I could understand it with everything else. I could understand with everything else, but the Torah lists these cases of, of where he's gone of and he's, and he's uh, shaykhet and, and uh, as moichet. You see, so every animal, every animal, if you get it younger, it gets better as it gets older. So, or, or it gets becomes more valuable as it gets older. So why should it be... What, I mean, the Torah is mefar, this, but these types of ideas. Now, if you got a car, and the car, I, I bought an old car, and now the car is worth more because it's an old car. That's a different story because because it's, uh, it, 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 it got better because of its age for some reason, or old wine, maybe wine too. But uh, but the Torah specifically says uh, for... Uh, so these, I, I, I don't see how this is. Uh, uh, we're we're picking on on this case and saying that uh, he's he's kind of it. He's kind of kind of it with uh, as soon as it, uh, it, it you know it gained it gained an ounce. It keeps kind of it. No, 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 no. This is not gaining an ounce. This is it's changing its status from one animal to another. Right. It's it's going it's going from a calf to a cow. It's considered a major change. Okay. That's that's what it's saying. That's the whole thing is because that's the shinu is the main thing. It's still I agree with you. It's still not a not a fair thing. But that's that's what the gemara is saying. Would you say that on grape juice? You, you had a barrel of grape juice and then it became wine. Now it's worth more. Oh, we have a, we have a case in the gemara in brachas. With the, with the wine that became uh, became vinegar, right? But the fact that the vinegar went up in value, so he didn't lose out. Right. So, right. so, but you see, you know, so that could happen also. So, would you say it's that ch- type of change is, a, is also? Uh, yes, that's a shemi Why becoming it, vinegar is a shemi oh. Or or grape juice becoming wine? Yeah. That maybe not. That a lot of people... Yeah. Anyways, yes, that's it. That is a shinu. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So Acer of Chanila Rabbi Lois, Rabbi Chanila had a kasha in Rabbi Lois. Has gone up to Levanasa Ayil. He stole a lamb and it became a ram. Egel Levanasa Shor Meshal to Shum Mekevel to Shum Avra Kamisha Kain Shagonav. He behaves like <laughs> like when it when it got stolen. So you see that there was a shinu, right? And he still has to pay. He's still paying kefel or dalid vehe. Visag that the kanya bishinu. If you're going to say, like, like Rabbi Loy just said, that when it becomes such a shinu, he's kind of, am I why is he paying it? It's his that's shechting, and it's his that he's selling, right? It's just a straight cash of Rabbi Loy. So, so he, and he said back to him, what do you want to say, that the shinu is not koina? So then why is he paying the way it was worth when it was stolen, the Shalom Ki Hashta, he should pay what it's worth right now. Right? Maman of Shach. Right? If it's if it's not considered a Shinoi, so then he should be paying what it's worth when he shechted it. So when he st- when he sold it, not when he's not when well, when he stole it. Right? So that's a steer in the price itself, which the Gemara is going to discuss in a minute. Right? But the Vila, the first part of the of the price is straight up Kasha and Rabbi Loi. Rabbi Loi says that the guy is koinet, and therefore when he shechts it, he's shechting his own animal. And this price clearly says that he's not. So ki hashta time of the loy misham. The reason why he's not paying what it's worth right now is mishum the amar lei turo gan bimimach bimcham. Sorry, did I steal a goat from? Uh, I'm gonna go. Did I steal a shor from you? Dichro gan bimimach. Did I steal a ram from you? I stole a eagle from you, and I stole a tle. I didn't steal these major animals. Right? So basically what he's saying is that he's saying that it's stuck somewhere in the middle. When he stole, he stole a calf from the guy. Now when he shechted it, it was a cow. So he's saying that's not the same animal that I stole from you. But it's enough. It's enough yeah. that he it's enough that he has to pay which, whatever was worth from the original stealing, but not enough that he would be high of dollar behe. Right? Well, there's, this is the recipe to how to be a how to be a successful ganif. 
if you if you play the game right yes right yeah. meaning it sounds to me like he's gonna have to pay dollar for hay based on its worth of ego he's right that part i think this is the way i think that this is what he's saying you're gonna have to pay dollar for hay on what it was worth when it was a calf not when it was worth what what it was worth when it was a cow which means that the payment should be a lot less he didn't check the other guys. Uh, he didn't check his eagle. He checked at his own shore. Right. You know. So you try, you well, know. That's... Yeah, but that that's that that's the way he's saying it. Somehow, it's somewhere in the middle, right? Um. So Amarle, so he told him back. But these next two lines, I don't, I don't understand. Amarle, not that the other lines I did understand, but this I for sure not. Hashem should save us from such from such das. Right? Meaning, what are you trying to do? Split it? Either, either there was a shinoi or there was no shinoi. Why, why are you playing it down the middle and trying to play both sides? Amalei, so Khanina told him back, Hashem should save us from your das. Right? Meaning, you could split it. Again, Reb is saying you could split the Chaymesh and you only pay Chaymesh based on what it was worth when it was a calf. Right? But, but uh, and Reb Loy is saying, no, you can't split that. It's either all in or all out. So each one of them, so what, well, I, I'm not sure what was the point of, of these things of them saying this to each other, that Hashem should save, he says, Hashem should save us from your das. And he said back to him, Hashem should save us from your das. I, I'm not sure what that's adding. What's that? What 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 that's adding to the mix here? But yeah, okay. Let's see a little bit more. So maskol Reb Zera b'Nikninu b'Shinu Hashem. Right? Why don't we? Um, why isn't he kind of with Shinu Hashem? Because now the chain then it changed names. It went from Egel to uh, how do you call it? Egel to Shar. And it went from Tle to Ayl. So my Rava, Shor ben Yoimai Kari Shor, Ayl ben Yoimai Kari Ayl. Rava says, not necessarily the different name. A Shor, a day old calf could be called a Shor, and a day old uh, ram could be called a ram. Shor ben Yoimai Kari Shor, the Sif Shor a Kesavay Ez ki Yivali. Right? A Shor a Kesavay Ez when it gives birth. Right? Um, Ayl ben, yeah. So how do you, where do you learn out from that? When it was born, not when it gives birth, because I touch it wrong. Eva laid mean when it, when it was born. So you see, it's called a shar and an uh, a's, right? When it's born, ayel ben yoyme kori ayel and an ayel a day old is also called ayel to siv ve'elit tzayim kolo yochalti, right? And the the ayel of your 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 uh, is talking about Yaakov Avinu, right? When he told Laban, I didn't eat the. The rams of your of your sign I didn't eat. Right, Eilim Eilim who deloy achal, he didn't eat rams, but kvasim achal. I'm sorry, it's a question. Eilim who deloy achal kvasim achal, he ate rams, but he but a keves he he did. Elu lav shemami no ayil ben yoy my kare ayil, it's called an ayil. Fine, so you see that you can't be <laughs> kind of. With a shine Hashem, fine. We call Mokum Kasha. But the Gemara says, Lamaisa, you have a Kasha. Right? Meaning there's a stira. Is when it goes from a ram to a, I'm sorry, when it goes from a, how do you call it? A lamb to a ram, or from an eagle to a shar. Right? Um, is it the mice? Is it considered his or not? Was there a Kenyan or not? Right? So Omar Rav Sheshvis, Hamani Beshamai, it's not a stira because the mice it's Beshamai. Damri Shina be Makaimai Imedis. Beshamai holds that a Shinui stays in its place, but like Kani and you're not Kainit. What is this talking about? The Tanya. <coughs> so we know there's something called Esnan Zaina. Then anything given to a Zaina as payment for Znus. You're not, she's not allowed to give it to the base of Mikdash. And the same thing for a dog. If you buy something, take money and bought a dog, so then it doesn't work. 
you can't give it to the Beis HaMikdosh. Let's say you give as a tenena, as a payment to a zaina, you gave her wheat. And then she makes it into flour. You give her olives and she made it into olive oil. Anobim grapes, vasan yain, made it into wine. Tani chada also, we learned one brass that it's also, meaning also you can't use it for the base of Mikdash, even though it's a total new entity. Right, but Tani Chada Mutter. We have another verse that says that it's Mutter because it's a it's a new entity. From Yosef Tani Gurion de Maspurik. That's the name of a place. Beishamai Oisrin. Beishamai says is the one that says also. Rishilam Matirin. Rishilam says it's Mutter. My time of the Beishamai. Why does he say that it's also the Siv Gam? It says the word also. The Rabbi she knew she she knew Yehem. It's coming to include their Shinu. It's meaning. If you paid the zaina with wheat and she made it into flour, since it's the same thing, it just changed, she still gets it. She, you cannot give it to the base of But still, haim, it says the word pasuk, the pasuk says haim them, the loy shinu yayim, and not the shinu. So maybe since it's a new entity, you're allowed to give it to the base of Mikdash, which would mean the same thing here. Beisham is saying, even though it underwent a change, it's still considered the same animal. And Basil would say, not like that. Isn't the word haim coming to tell us that if an, it was a pregnant animal that was used to pay the zaina, so then the fetus, after it's born, can be used to the Beis HaMikdash. Doesn't he need haim for that? So, um, I'm sorry, not doesn't he. That's what he does with the word haim. That's what Beis Shammai does with the word haim. You can hear both things from him. You can dash in two things out of him. Him and not if they change. Him and them and not their, their babies. What's Basil doing with the word gam? Right? Beshamai said gam is coming to say that even if there was a shinui, it's still asr. What's Basil going to do with that? Gam to Basil, kasha. The word gam to Basil is taka kasha. Right, so we don't know. We don't know what this little doesn't have an answer for that. Okay. Um, we'll stop over there. Uh.